And let's really keep an eye on the chat room this time. Greetings, everybody, and Yay. welcome. We are having our Advanced Love Coach Academy webinar. And I've only invited my friends. Henceforth, I'm wearing my hair down for uh, the launch. It's always going to be back, but for my friends, <laughs> I'm wearing the hair down. Beloved Emily is here by my side. I'm excited to be here with all of you all. And we're really excited. We've got as our special guest star. A special? A, spe a special. A special guest. A special guest. Um, <laughs> Paul Sterling is going to be with us. And Paul is a brilliant teacher and coach. Some of you know him, but for those of you who don't, you're going to really enjoy what Paul has to say. Yeah. Uh, say hello, Paul. Hey, everybody. I am touched, moved, and inspired. I really love what you guys do, and I think this is the perfect time on the planet to be learning Love Coach because um, there's so much controversy and challenge going on the planet. It's time that we brought something else out to people. Yeah. yeah. So Paul is uh, coming in from Colorado. Um, you know, this is really, today marks the beginning of a very big new era uh, for Emily, myself, Olivier, and I want to introduce Olivier, who makes it all happen, our show producer, um, who's really made the whole Love Coach Academy online thing happen, and Olivier, I'm so grateful for you. Mm. you know, Olivier came all the way from France to find his family, and here we are. Absolutely. I, I love uh, the work and I love being service. Thank you. This really is the start of a whole new era because now uh, we're going to be doing at least one webinar a week. Uh, we're really going to be putting, I've been putting much more of my time and attention into the online part of the Love Coach Academy. Uh, Emily and Olivia have been putting a lot of attention in Katrina who can't be with us right now but I want to acknowledge Katrina who's put a lot of energy into it. Yeah. And really, this is where we're going. You know, we can't, it's one thing we can go and teach classes every night for 20 or 30 people, or we can start learning how to really reach the entire world online, and, and that's the direction we're going in. And our intention was to really get as many of our friends out there, and we're going to chat with all of you. We want to acknowledge those of you that Melodia, are out there. hello out there. Yeah, let us know who's yeah. there. Say hello. Start using the chat room, because that's our only way of knowing Who's, who's with us. We see that uh, there are 18 of you in attendance, but we don't know who's who's here yet. So, oh, oh there we do. There we go. Adrian. Hello, Adrian, Tia, Sharon, Olaf, yay. Olaf from Hawaii. Tressa, Olaf. Megan from Hawaii. Um, Art. Michelle is with us. Art from down in San Diego. Jaguar gets the credit for the furthest. She's in New Zealand. <laughs> Triambika down in the... Nigel in Bali. Nigel in Bali, yeah. yeah, and Adrienne, who's also in New Zealand. We have Adrienne in Oregon and Adrienne in New Zealand. Awesome. And, oh, and beloved Katrina is with us. So um, please do use the chat room because that helps us to, to answer your questions, connect in. Mm. Uh, we want to really give you some uh, wonderful tips and tools uh, these are you're our dearest friends, and you're who we want to collaborate with. Uh, we really have invited those of you that we want to ride a long ways with. Yes. So um, with that, because it is close family, shall we start with an invocation? Yeah, you can start and I'll kind of... Yeah, okay. So just inviting everybody to uh, drop mm -hmm. down and feel yourself, feel your feet on the ground. Noticing our breath. <sighs> and really feeling our connection to our true mother, our beloved Mother Earth, Gaia. Appreciating just all the ways that our beloved Mother Earth nourishes us and supports us. The magic of gravity, just enough gravity to hold us to the ground and keep us from flying off into space, and yet we're free to do whatever we want to do, go where we want to go. <sighs> Moving our attention to what you might call source, God, higher self, divine self. I like to call it Father, Sky, Creator. May we all be clear channels for spirit to flow through. May we all be clear channels for source to come through us. 
in our relationships, mm. in our coaching, in our connection to source, to self, to each other. Imagining Father Sky and Mother Earth meeting in the center point of our being, in the fourth of our seven chakras, meeting in our heart, making love inside mm. of our hearts. Imagine Father Sky Creator, Mother Earth Gaia, making love inside your heart right now. Let's just take a moment and breathe into our heart space. So let's take a big inhale. And exhale, release. And just tuning into your precious heart, even feeling the heartbeat underneath your hand. This is your sacred life, your sacred heart. And as you are here with your heart, just asking your heart, how are you? How are you feeling in this moment? Hmm. And asking your heart, what is it that you desire right now? What do you desire? And just whatever comes, allow it to come. And I want to ask you if, can you give that to your heart mm. right now? Can you give that? This is self-love, when we can give our heart what we need or what we long for, and even just a simple way, even just acknowledgement. Mm. And as you're with your heart, what in this moment are the words that you've always wanted someone to say to your heart? What are the words that you've always wanted someone to say to your heart that you'd like to receive? Mm -hmm. And can you say that to your own precious heart? could be as simple as I love you, or I'm here for you, or you're okay. You're going to be okay. You're safe. You are perfect exactly as you are. Mm. So just breathing in to whatever words of affirmation or words of acknowledgement come. And slowly allowing your hand to release to your heart, thanking your heart for whatever came. And feeling again your connection to beloved Mother Earth. And let's take in one inhale and just exhale on an ohm together. Oh. slowly just coming back in present time opening our eyes and coming into presence together hmm. I see myself Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know I'd love to anybody that wants to share in the chat room yeah um, what words came to your heart would love to hear from some of you so share with us and I want to greet some of the new people that joined us a lot of our friends from San Diego Heika and Sharon Hinckley and Melodia Art, uh, um, uh, Larry, Larry, Teresa, Marilea, a lot of our friends from San Diego are joining us. San Triampica, Diego, we love you, San Diego. We love San Diego. We were going to be there. I this know. Time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let us know what some of the things are that came into your heart. We'd love to read that. It looks like a dropout from here, and probably they should come back pretty, fa pretty soon. But so it 
does that leave you and me, Olivier, for right now to fill this beautiful space until we get back, Scott and Emily? Looks like it's um, there. I can hear them talk in the main room right now, but unfortunately, um, I'm not sure uh, what happened. I might have to go check with them. Sorry about that. Well, if you go check with them, I'll introduce myself briefly and give a tiny teaser for what's one of the things that's coming up. Um, Perfect. Oh, so now that you're gone, Olivia, it's, uh, let me see if, there we go. Hi, everybody. Paul Sterling here in um, Denver, Colorado right now, and I'm actually at a uh, solar company where they brought me in to work on uh, culture and relationships in that. And uh, a tiny bit of my background while, while we're waiting for Scott and Emily to come back in is I've been teaching compassion and communication, mainly to couples, but I'm also teaching it um, for the last eight years to inmates, anywhere from minimum to maximum security. I've taught it at Naropa University, here in uh, Boulder, Colorado, and most of the work is with couples, and I really enjoy working with Scott and Emily, and I see them coming in right now, so it's back to you guys. I was just doing a brief introduction while you were getting back on. I love oh, you so thank much. You thank you for coming you know, to the rescue. Take, all of a sudden, it was like, ah! We got cut out. It's like, oh my god, okay, we're out of our own webinar. So you, you do have a way of taking um, crisis or breakthrough and just jumping in there, and I really appreciate that, <laughs> Paul. Oh, no problem. Thank you, Paul. So, and I'll talk a little bit at the end about going from ignored to adored, and and some of the tools that I teach relationship coaches and counselors, counselors and therapists to use with their. Um, clients to transform their relationships and most of the focus is on people who really love each other but are having a real problem with the way they communicate with each other yeah so yeah, no. I'll swing it back to you and you know one of the things that we really want to do is we want for all of our key love coaches to start to get to know each other mm -hmm. because we're building a community here um, you know I see that we've got Jaguar and Adrienne in New Zealand where Emily and I are going to be going next month again. And I'm just really excited to bridge so that everybody gets to know Paul Sterling and Paul's specialties. Because ultimately, we're all going to be so busy as the Love Coach Academy expands and as we develop our online membership. At some point, we're going to have thousands and thousands of online members, and they're going to all want coaching. And so we're going to you know, say, okay, who will we send it? sending to Paul, who do we send to Adrienne, who do we send to Ann West, who do we send to Katrina. Um, so as we all get to know each other and people cultivate their specialties and also the geographic areas, so we're building community here and um, we're going to be doing a lot of webinars and we really, I'm, I, I'm excited because I get to know how wonderful all of you are and so I'm excited to introduce the Paul Sterlings of the world to all of you who are there. So. Um, wanted to uh, introduce our show producer, our beloved Olivier. Olivier, are you available to come on board and talk a little bit and let people know how to use the chat room? Sure. Um, so basically, I mean, you, you can use the chat room uh, easily. If you want to ask a question, um, you, you have the possibility to uh, mark as a question, and then it will show as a red question, so it will stand out. Uh, so it's easier for us to spot your question and answer it. Uh, th that's the first thing. And I don't know if um, Scott wants to invite someone to to take um, to speak, so um, we can take a live question with your microphone and even your webcam if you want. And to to request that, it would be. Uh, the second button is the room button, button, and in the room button you will see a green button saying saying request to speak, and you can cancel your request to speak as well. We will see your hands um, coming up and see that you uh, request to join us to ask your question live, for example. You would need to be connected to your Gmail account in order to join us on the call. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, so, you know, we're all kind of learning together. This is our first uh, Love Coach Academy webinar that we're actually producing it ourselves. And so that's that why we wanted to start with you, our dearest friends. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to acknowledge Katrina. Katrina is actually on the call, but she wasn't in a situation where she could come on by computer. Olivier, can you put up the first doc that I sent you? It's the Love Coach Academy Foundations. And uh, this is a doc that Katrina put together uh, based on the teaching that I've been doing and that many of you have helped us to evolve. And uh, I just want to kind of go through it with all of you. And we will post this um, on the Facebook page and we'll also email it uh, out to those of you who are on this call so you can use it. But it's a really wonderful foundational piece. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, this, is, this is how we as love coaches like to do it. You know, what makes us different? We are uh, not therapists. We're not wanting to work with people week after week after week. We're wanting to support and coach people to learn how to manage their own problems, to learn how to manage their own situations. And so I'm really grateful for um, Katrina putting this document it's together. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so um, if anybody has any thoughts or questions, uh, we can call on one of you. Um, so we'll kind of give that as an experiment. Uh, so Olivier, if you notice if anybody raises their hand, um, uh, let us know and we can call on one of them. If Katrina is in a position where she could talk and wants to, I'd love to give her a chance to say something about this document. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. And again, just looking at it, remember that what we want to do, kind of such a foundation of our teaching, is differentiating between our thoughts, our feelings, and those universal needs and values that are underneath it all. And that's that's what what the Love Coach Academy is really wanting people to learn, and it's a constant practice. When am I telling myself something? When am I in a projection? When am I in a judgment? When am I in my head? You know, I want to say that this little whippersnapper next to me, it's embarrassing how many times if I get triggered, I'll be in my head and she'll be saying, okay, Scott, what are you telling yourself? No, that's not what I'm telling myself. That's what it really is, damn it. You know? <laughs> and I have to remember, oh, yeah, it takes 20 to 30 minutes sometimes to actually come out of that trigger space. And can I hold empathy that long or do I need to you know, take care of myself, set boundaries. What, what's my authentic capacity to be able to show care for him? Because sometimes it takes a while for someone to come out of a triggered space. Yeah, yeah that has happened to us a few yeah. times. And listen, I've been teaching this for 15 years, and it's, it's a constant practice. What am I telling myself? When am I in my story? Because the pain that comes with the story is real. Yeah. The sensations in our body, the emotional discomfort is real. But what we're telling ourselves that's triggering that pain or keeping us in that pain isn't necessarily real. In fact, it's very rarely is real. It's a story. It's a story that we're running. And it's usually a story about something that happened or something that we projected. What's always real is our feelings. So that's where the empathy comes in. I'm really angry. I'm really scared, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. And then underneath that, what are our universal human needs and longings that are not being met? And so that's just such, a, such an important part of our teaching here. So and Scott, to, just to add a quick thing to that is making those needs precious because actually in our culture it's almost an insult to say that you're needy and it's it's transformational to become comfortable and compassionate with our needs and be vulnerable because vulnerability in a lot of ways is thought of as a weakness and it's you know that TED talk with Brene Brown of like vulnerability as a power versus right. a weakness. And it's, that's all transformational. It's a different way of behaving in relationships and in our culture. Right. Yeah. Thank you for adding Thank that. That's so right on. And it's great to have you with us, Paul. Jump in. Jump in. Thank you. Olivia, can yeah, hard to stop me. <laughs> can you scroll down more, Olivier, so we can see uh, Katrina's document? So. Beautiful. Watch your words. Watch your actions. Beautiful. And watch, watch your heart. heart yeah. You know, what makes us unique is that we want to stay in our heart, as yeah. opposed to traditional psychologists or therapists, which is wonderful work, but it's very mental. We empathize with our clients. Mm -hmm. We feel 
with our friends. We're, we're really trying to stay in our heart of empathy while providing the tools and the practices. And a big part of what we're going to be sharing with you today is uh, some really wonderful coaching integrity ideas and guidelines that Emily has developed. Mm. We're going to go there in a few moments. But I um, wanted to remind all of you, if you haven't already, please, please, please register as an affiliate for our online membership. Um, we're going to start the free webinars uh, this Sunday, May 3rd. Uh, the first one's going to be uh, Katrina, Emily, and myself. Then we're doing another one with Paul Sterling and Ann West. and That's going to be on Thursday, May 7th. And then another one on Sunday, May 10th, all leading to the opening of our sales card. For one week, mm -hmm. people can join the Love Coach Academy and get a lifetime membership for only three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Right, and the lifetime membership means that you'll be getting basically, if as long as we're open, once a week we're giving a free webinar, and also we're gonna you're gonna be able to build a com into a community portal of basically coming in to a live chat room. It's like a Facebook kind of group where you can ask questions, get empathy, start building a community um, that can support you. And so it's, a, it's an amazing deal. This will eventually be a $1,000 lifetime membership, but we're starting it off really inexpensively. And by becoming an affiliate, it costs nothing to become an affiliate, you just send out some emails to your list, and the people that join our membership site through you, you're going to get 50%. So for every person that you send an email, that person watches our free webinars, they like what we're offering, they buy, you make $187.50. So it doesn't cost you anything. It's just sending out some emails. And it's a great chance for us to start really building this all around the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited. We've got people on this call from Hawaii, people from New Zealand, Oregon, San Diego. Uh, so um, it, it looks like to Katrina, you, it, I see that you are trying to find the settings to figure out how to talk. Um, I'm wondering maybe if, if Olivier might be able to interact with her to kind of, I don't know if it's if that's possible. Yeah, It'd be Olivier, nice to have her say a couple words about this. Yeah, Olivier, is there a way that we can have Katrina come on board? And um, I can try to, to call her, see what's uh, specific about the computer. Um, if she's with a, a smartphone, for example, I, I doubt it's going to work. But if she's with a computer, I don't know, I can check. OK, okay great. great. Um, so while we do that, um, uh, we want to kind of take you into the next piece. And we're not going to show you the document right now, but uh, we've created a document which we will again post an email out. And because almost everyone on this call is what I consider to be one of our more advanced friends and love coaches, we really want to talk honestly right now mm. about something that Emily and I have been really discussing yeah. a lot. A lot. And it's how can we monitor our intentions and be really honest and self-reflective about when we're coaching someone, what's our intention? And are there times that our own projections, our own egoic needs, our own material needs mm -hmm. might get in the way of our ability to actually be neutral or to be as supportive as possible of our client? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, the one thing that I really want to say as a coach is we want to empower people to find their own answers, to find their own truth. And that's really taking us out of from the therapy model of the therapy therapist model will go into a lot of telling you what's 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 maybe wrong with you or a diagnosis. And it's a really tricky edge as a coach because we so want to get in there and provide help and support. And we have to be careful because we want to be able to limit the possibility of creating dependency um, with our client. And it's an edge. We really want to be able to check in with ourselves. It's like, am I empowering this person to be able to find their own truth, their own needs, and authentically move them out of a possibility to, of creating a dependency in the client coaching uh, relationship? You know, many of you have heard me say that you know, I grew up with a messiah complex, and it's true. I was born on Christmas Day. I literally thought it was up to me to save the world until I was about 10 years old. And uh, I've many, many, many times fallen into the rescuer role. And I always have to watch that. 
uh, when I traveled with Marshall Rosenberg. And it was really cool. I'm traveling with Marshall, and we're staying in hotel rooms together. And he gets to know me, and at one point he looks at me and goes, you know what, Scott? You're a fix-it jackal. You want to fix everybody. And I'm like, Ugh. Of course, he was right. And I always have to watch that. How quickly am I? Because sometimes I will see where the person needs to go, in my opinion, what we need to get to. And if I don't give enough empathy or ask permission, yeah. Can I share with you a perspective? Can I let you know what I think would be a, a good next step for you? If I'm not asking permission because I'm in the power position of coach, mm. I'm not fully empowering that person to have the choice to hear what I have to say. Mm. And it's hard because oftentimes I'm getting paid, I'm the wise elder, they're looking up to me, I'm mm -hmm. in the power position, and I can go too quickly into telling them what they should do even if I'm doing it in a subtle way. Mm. And so Emily has been really helping me to remember, ask permission. Yeah, it's Check part in. of our agreement. Mm. The, I, that's the thing that for me, that it's like I so value harmony in relationship. It's like I so want you to get it. I so yeah. want you to get out of pain. Yeah. That it's like I have to be careful that where am I holding on to my attachment to getting this person out of their horrible situation so that's my stuff it's because what happens is if I'm attached to getting them to get better then I'm not really present with them with where they are and I want to go into fixing you know immediately and, and giving them that tool to get better where it's like how can I actually get them there themselves you know how can I support them and it's an edge that we're constantly finding as a coach mm -hmm. so I found if we always lead with empathy lead with empathy and then our the power of in, of inquiry the power of curiosity so how does that judgment feel to you what's coming up what are the sensations that are come up for you when you run that judgment is that something that you want to continue does that you know what's the pain what are the consequences of that judgment so it's the power of inquiry to get that person to go whoa this isn't working for me i want something different and then it's then asking permission. Wow, I really have a great tool. Would you be open to hear that this of this tool? Because I think it might really help you. And maybe it won't. Maybe it won't resonate. And so what we're doing is we're giving people the power of choice. And that's what we want to do is most people aren't connected that they have choice. They're like, you're my coach. Just tell me what I need to do. <laughs> and so we want to give people... Asking permission is like I care and I respect you so much that I want to ask you if you want to hear what I have to say. And so it's empowering that person to give cho uh, choice. So that, that's kind of the progression I like to use as being in integrity with being in my coaching. A thought, and then we're going to take you all through a practice. The thought that just to kind of riff on what she said is how much time in my coaching session am I spending asking questions? And how much time am I making statements? And how much time am I teaching? Mm. Ideally, a lot of questions, a lot of curiosity, and then not too many statements, maybe no statements. And then before going into the teaching, say, okay, I'd love to share that tool with you. I'd love to share how to use the challenging situation worksheet or the getting centered, which hopefully we're going to talk about today when Maria Stark joins us. Um, so asking permission, giving a choice, and then, okay, now we're clearly in teaching time, teaching a tool, teaching a practice. Mm -hmm. So speaking of a practice, we want to take you through a practice right now. <laughs> and we'd like to ask you, each of you individually, to think of someone in your world that you've been coaching or um, working with. It can be a client or it can be a friend that you're helping a lot. And pick someone that you've got an ongoing coaching or advice giving mm -hmm. relationship with. And we're just going to ask you some questions. Just reflect on it within yourself. And then maybe we'll ask people through the chat room or by raise of hands, we'll call on a few of you that, that can speak, um, what came up for you. All right, so pick someone. And actually, I'm going to do it myself and let you lead with the questions. Yeah, so okay? it's just we're going to just go with these. Yeah, you go with those ones, questions, and I'm going to actually think okay. of someone that I'm working with. Okay, okay, great. So I just want to invite us to gently close our eyes and we're just kind of going to go inward and really bring that person into your mind's eye. 
person that you really care about? You know, what's either one person I'm coaching or perhaps a friend that I'm assisting right now that I really care about? Mm. Just take a few deep breaths. And just asking yourself, where might I be dropping into some unconscious patterns or tendencies to fix this mm. person, to try to heal them or make it better, or even to diagnose them. You know, diagnose them as being maybe codependent or maybe they have kind of an addictive pattern. That would be diagnosing, for example. Mm -hmm. So just self-reflecting, see whatever comes. Mm. Yeah. And the next question is, how might I be projecting or transferring my own stuff onto this person? Mm. Just breathing. And asking yourself, am I using the power of inquiry and curiosity to help empower this person to find their own truth? Hmm. And breathing. And then asking yourself, am I attached to this person getting better or getting the results that they want? I'm so attached. Am I attached to them getting better? And this is a big one as a, as a coach to really drop in is, am I attaching my value to their results? Mm, not so much. I have in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Am I attaching my value to their results? So that if you don't get somewhere in a session, you think, God, I'm a failure as a coach. There's something wrong with me. God, they're not getting better. They're not getting better. I, I've played that one a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I really want to thank Emily for coming up with these questions. Actually, this is just the first like quarter of a whole document that and, we send you. And we're going to be sending. This is something I typed up and... We'll get it out to we'll all of you. you. And I have noticed people are asking. We will post it, and we'll also email these docs out to everybody. Um, you know, I want to hear from a few people, but I'm going to tell you what happened for me. Yeah. Um, this is really helpful. Yeah. So one of the most difficult uh, clients I'm working with right now is this 18-year-old boy who lives out in Montana, and he's got his 16-year-old girlfriend pregnant, and she wants to have the baby. And they don't have money. They don't have the relationship is very new. It's uh, there's a lot of fighting, and she thinks having a baby is going to be the answer. And so it was really humbling because yeah. yeah, I'm so attached to kind of convincing him that this is a terrible <laughs> idea. This is not going to make your relationship better. <laughs> I've got some pretty strong ass opinions about this and. Yeah. And it was pretty humbling just to see how my opinions are in there. And um, I no longer attach my value because I know my value as a coach. But yeah, I'm so, I'm so attached. I am really attached. Yeah. And and it was interesting because I I did have a session where I asked him a lot of questions, and the questions did get him to turn around on a couple of things, yeah. you know. But I realized I just got to keep asking questions and helping him to paint pictures in his own mind not just my own projected pictures, but just got to keep asking those questions and helping him to, mm -hmm. to see for himself down the line what's likely, yeah. as opposed to me telling him what down the line yeah. is likely. 
I, I want to vulnerably share. I used to have people call me and be like, what's your tune in? What do you think I should do about that? Like, what is your body telling you? And I used mm. to think, wow, I got so egoic, like spiritually high. Like, yeah, I got the answers. My intuition rocks. Yes. And I had to like really shift over when I turned into coaching. Like, wow, I'm, I'm creating a dependency of people calling me based in my own projection of what I think they should do. So. Yeah. And I want, to I want to welcome, uh, in a few minutes, we're going to hear from Maria Stark, who is joining us from Indiana, where she's on tour, sharing her brilliance. So welcome, Maria. I'm glad you're able to work Hi. with us. Are there anybody yeah, that I'd would like to, to, yeah, from to hear from someone? I'd people. love to hear. So Olivier, do we have anybody that we can hear from that uh, our technology will allow us to hear from them? Um, right now, it's in the chat, and if you... If we want to invite people to join us. Um, we can do that. They would need to raise their hands, and then I can try to invite them. Uh, but they would need to be connected to their Google um, pro, um, account. Uh, it's even better to use uh, Google Chrome, probably, than um, another browser. But we can try. And, and so if you'd like to participate and ask a question or share, then please do that. Raise your hand. And um, anybody who raises their hand, you can call on them if they you think that we can connect. And I want to just acknowledge Larry. what Larry said. Yeah, Let's Larry from that. San Diego. You want to? Uh, go ahead. Yeah. So Larry asks, how do you feel about asking the client if they would like your opinion after you've given them plenty of opportunities to find their own answers? So that's a really that's a really good question. Yeah, I mean, you again. You're asking your that's that's highly respectful. You're asking the client how would they feel, it you know for your feedback. So again, it's asking permission. I think that's uh, definitely and and of course, if you've already really asked them a lot of questions, I think that's great, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we have anybody who wants to uh, come on board and share what came up for them in yeah, this? Yeah, I'm so this? excited. I want to see a face. All I see is myself right <laughs> well, now. Well, we can only I, see them. I can see them. Yeah, we can only see Maria and Paul and uh, Olivier. But um, we can hear from other people. I would love that. Yeah, anybody? Are people okay. shy? I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, 27 people on board with us. And I, I know some of you are so talented and curious. Yeah. So, okay. Well, well Scott, I'm, I'm going to share just one little thing. Um, first place, I want to thank you for being so compassionate and vulnerable about your own process because a lot of times as a coach, a therapist, any of those roles, we're it's like we hold this picture that we're supposed to have all the answers. Yeah. And I love it when you share your vulnerabilities, and that makes it safer for a client to share their vulnerabilities. Yeah. You know, I, I, in this I case, do. other coaches. Thank you. I do try to... Oh, good. Katrina just joined us. Hello. Um, so we're going to hear from Katrina in a moment. Um, I, I often will let clients know when a personal prejudice is coming up, uh, when a personal bias is coming up, or mm -hmm. if I've gotten triggered. And, and it took me a while to trust doing that, and now I, I, I trust it. It's like if I say to a client, you know, I've got to be honest, I'm not completely neutral love coach Scott right now. Scott the person just got triggered by that. Or I'm noticing I really have a strong bias. And I have said to this young man, I have a strong bias that, you know, I work with adults who are in their 30s who have plenty of money, and they really question whether it was a wise idea to have children. So when I hear two teenagers who are just starting their relationship and don't know each other very well, who don't have jobs or money, I have a real strong bias that it's not a great idea. You might really, it, it, it's going to be really, really, really hard. In, uh, and I'll let them know that there's a bond there. Asking more questions. I really realize mm -hmm. that you need to ask more questions. You have to be careful about sharing when you're triggered in front of your client because then your client becomes uncomfortable and then your clients kind of can go into this place of wanting to maybe caretake you. Yeah. So that's why it's like, I, hang on, I just got to take a moment and take a deep breath. And that's demonstrate it. how we take care of our trigger. Take care of your trigger so that yeah. you're, again, empowering to showing this is what I do when I get triggered. Um, so that's uh, careful because I've done that in a session. I've said that I'm triggered, and then the person was like, "I didn't know what to do," you know. Right, and, right. Um, yeah. Katrina is with us, and so um, I want to call upon Katrina, and then we're going to hear Maria. Can you be with us? Are you on a time frame, Maria? Or are you okay for a little bit? 
Is that okay, thumbs up? Yes, okay, thumbs great. Up. Okay, so uh, Katrina and then Maria. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good to be joining you. I was trying to actually join in um, as a participant, not not this way, but somehow this happened, so here I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just delighted that people uh, like what they saw on the Foundations page. Um, and as I, as I was writing that up, it, it really is about how these tools are not only really grounded and really practical when it comes to... Um, building amazing relationships and amazing community um, but also as a spiritual practice you know some people their spiritual practice is just on Sunday or it's just when they do their meditation or uh, you know there's people have their their times that they do their spiritual practice this makes your everyday walk a spiritual practice it makes your every relationship a spiritual practice uh, not only with the people around you but also you know in in this document is that relationship to yourself to really recognize what are the thoughts that are going on what's on autopilot are they serving you right what what can be let go of what can be transformed um, same with your feelings and your actions uh, to to be self-reflective and to really uh, seek to live in that place of love and I, I just love the synergy uh, between Scott and Emily, I love how their attention to themselves and their relationship with each other is this beautiful example of how a relationship can be a catalyst for each person to just be propelled into higher awareness and, and a higher... <laughs> it's humbling. It's, it's a humbling experience, this relationship. Yeah. And what a blessing to share these tools because you're able to reflect them with each other and I know it's it's in my relationship with our community with people who share these tools that I have awesome growth you know of course I have my my other people in the world too who don't have the tools and I use the tools with them to be able to live from a place of my heart and connect with them and create win-wins um, but I, I gotta say to be able to build a community to be in regular connection with people who are grounded in this work committed to this work is such a blessing. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm grateful for. I I know just about everyone on this call. All the names I heard, I was like, oh, yay! I love these people, <laughs> and and that is such a gift. It's it's great to have you all here with us. It's great to know that, um, you know, regardless of the distance, you know, Jaguar in New Zealand. I love you. I'm happy we're still connected, mm -hmm. um, and and great to be growing in these tools. Mm. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, you for you Katrina great. has done so much really to support Love Coach Academy from the very beginning, yeah. from the very first Love Coach Academy retreat right here in this house. And you know, thank you for just all the ways you contribute to us. And mm -hmm. definitely please everybody join us on Sunday night. Um it's gonna be Katrina, Emily, and myself leading the first um kind of webinar for the world, if you will. Yeah. And uh, that's gonna be Sunday at six PM Pacific time. And we're going to be sharing three simple secrets on how to get your needs met. How to be heard, understood, and get your needs met. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Katrina. And thank you also for all the wonderful docs that you make for yes. us. They're really awesome. Awesome. Oh, I love it. I love, Emily, what you just came out with. So I'd love to work that one with you. I, yeah. I would love that. And it does need editing, but I will. I, I definitely am excited to shoot it over to our people, and we'll get Lori yeah. Masters on it, too. Yeah. And, yeah. Yes, yeah. beautiful. We should also acknowledge Lori Masters, who really definitely. donated so much time editing, you know, taking Scott Speak, which is like stream of consciousness <laughs> stuff, and putting it into something that's readable. So. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Recognizing there are people that are structural out there, yes. you know, and that like to really see things in writing and have things, you know, itemized and to understand things. Yes. So. If you're seeing any typos or anything that's awkward whatsoever in the text, it's because it hasn't gone through Lori yet. She's yeah. definitely precision revision and and just has such a passion for this work as well. A lot of I'm, gratitude for Lori. I'm noticing um Nigel in Bali. Welcome, Nigel. Um, is asking, I'm on my iPhone and I'm not able to listen and have access to the chat room at the same time. Any ideas how to enable both? So I don't know, Olivier, if that's something that uh, that you know about. 
Um, I have to admit that since I've been like using the system recently for myself and my own webinars, I haven't had the chance to also pull them on my phone. So I'm I'm gonna try it right now and see what happens. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thanks, Olivia. Um, so we're gonna turn it over to Maria Stark, and um, Maria is just somebody I'm so proud of who she is as a human being and uh, so grateful for your presence in my life and in our world. She Aww, sings, thanks, Scott. she teaches, she is creative and she has, and this is what I love about this is I kind of took what I learned from Marshall and other teachers and morphed it and made it my own and now people like Katrina and Maria Stark and Emily are taking kind of what they've learned from me and from other teachers and morphing it and making it their own. And most of you are familiar with the Challenging Situation Worksheet. Uh, most of you have hopefully used it. And Maria, I don't, you'll have to tell the story of how this all evolved. She took kind of some of those ideas and some other ideas and she's created the most amazing new document which we will email to all of you and um, I guess I'll let you talk a little bit about it and then um, can we can post, post it. it. Yes, oh, post yeah, it. Post so it. there it is. Um, mm. But we'll, we'll look at Maria for a moment and let you talk and then... Uh, awesome. Am I on the big screen now? <laughs> you are. You are on the big screen. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I don't know who exactly is on here on the names, but I'm, I hope I know some of you and I love that we're all here together. Uh, this worksheet that I created last month is called Getting Centaured. Um, and when I think about being in a triggered state and needing to really call forth the wisdom of compassionate communication, it's like I wanted to have a, a thing that I could share, translate what, what's the first sort of response that we need to do, get centered. And so the idea is that the centaur is a mythical creature that's half horse and also half human. And so it's, it's being able to really acknowledge that we have this sort of primal instinct in our first sort of reaction and then that we're moving uh, into more of our uh, an evolved human capacity which is moving into our frontal cortex so the, the centaur is holding both of those really eloquently and it's also Chiron Chiron you know the wounded healer and so really being able to just hold our own inner wounding and the parts of us that really go uh, go 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 there and so Getting Centered is a challenging situation worksheet, basically with uh, an acronym. And I came up with this, again, because I was part of a guardianship training, and they were teaching all about how to be rangers and first responders. And she taught her whole curriculum with an acronym. I'm just like, oh, I'm about to teach a workshop on compassionate communication. I wonder if I can get the whole curriculum down <laughs> to an acronym. And so this is my first my first go at that. <laughs> so that's a story. It was a quick story. It was quick. It, it happened really quickly, just a couple moments, and um, and I found that it's really been fun to teach from here because uh, it does. It has a, a map of all uh, many of the tools that I've been learning and a way to just cycle them deeper. So there you see it. I'll just go over it. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the process, catch mm -hmm. the centaur. We first catch the thought, catch the story. What's the emotion or feeling behind it? What's the need, C-E-N, or the longing, the desire? T, trading places with the other person. I love the idea about trading our trading perspectives as an idea of like what's alive, asking what's alive for the other person, just like re really trading spots. Mm -hmm. um, and then the A, which is adjusting the seat of our mind, adjusting our posture, our consciousness. And that's Scott's and Emily's beautiful work, the seven adjustments. And um, but really any kind of adjustment, is there in a, a way that I can adjust how I'm thinking and holding my energy or my thought process to just from a closed posture to open? Can I make, what adjustment can I make to open up? Um, and then you, just like it's the understanding of that we're all human, right? How perfectly human mm -hmm. comes right in there. That this whole process, we're all doing the best we can. And then the R is the reflection, the relaxation, the reassurance. What requests can I make? It's just like how to how to recycle all of these things. So that is the getting centered practice. I hope it benefits the Love Coach Academy. And for those who get to ingrain it in the mind, it, it helps me, again, teach really quickly to people um, and then they can come back to it. oh what is getting centered oh yeah oh yeah what what did I learn <laughs> what's the process let's get the map in there really quickly that is so awesome it is awesome Yay! it's just Yay, awesome thank you oh god you know Maria I so appreciate um, the, the creativity yeah. 
and it's it's like amazing because it's creative, it's very practical, it's very playful, and it works on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, I like the that the centaur is half animal, half human, and the animal part is the bottom part, and the human mm -hmm. part is that you know is kind of like movement towards higher consciousness in the brain, and you know we are in animal bodies, mm -hmm. but being divinely human is perfect. Mm. It is that yeah. perfectly human place where, okay, mm -hmm. I'm managing my emotions and I'm managing my feelings and I'm wanting to make requests and I'm wanting to understand the other person. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is the divine mm -hmm. human experience mm -hmm. that we're all yeah. practicing together in our yeah. relationships, in our community, and through the Love Coach Academy. And you just, you yeah. nailed it. You nailed it. Totally. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me on to get to share about it. Oh, Yay, thank, thank you. you. So grateful. So grateful for this work and how it impacts my entire life, all my relationships so so deeply, deep bows. Mm -hmm. And tell, what are you doing in Indiana? I'm on I'm on tour. I'm hanging out with my friend Travis Levity and he's putting on a huge show on Wednesday. And so, you know, hundreds of there's gonna be like five or six hundred people there singing and, and wearing different hats and being in a big theater production. So I'm I've I've come to support him and make music and make merry. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, Maria. Love Thank you, very you guys. Much. Yep. Mwah. Take care. Um, Paul Sterling, what do you think about getting centaured? I loved it. I, I, part of what I love about this is the group that I hang out with and how much I um, learn. And I realize I've got to change the lighting. You know, everybody's – Scott, Emily, you just about have a halo behind you with the white light. <laughs> I may have a shine, but not a halo. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really anything that we can use when we're triggered to get out of that triggered state and get grounded is really helpful. Any acronym, I mean, that was a very powerful. I like the metaphor that came with it of the half animal, half spirit, because that's a challenge we have in a relationship, because there's human animal in a relationship and human spirit. And a lot of human animal is about survival and almost tricking, you know, getting the best mate um, based on attractivity and reproduction. And human spirit is picking the person that's going to help us grow and learn and be. And they they can be very different at times. Absolutely. Like my human animal wants that person, but my human spirit really wants that person. And I think that's such an port, important distinction to start getting curious about. It's like, what, when is my ego driving me? And when is that place of centered, like, higher consciousness? Like, because there are different needs from different places. And Scott and I like to do the mantra of, my will and thy will are one. Always thy will, will be done. done. My, my will, will and thy will are one. Always thy will be done. And th that it actually helps. I, well, I can speak from my perspective, kind of aligning those. It's like, wow, okay, where, where, what is my, what is in my highest good? What's my highest will? Mm -hmm. And it's good. It's like, and not making the egoic desires bad, but simply acknowledging them. You know, it's and and aligning with the highest road of action. Yeah. You know, um, I want to answer. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that mantra in here. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm noticing people are asking about copies. Yes, we're going to send out an email to all of you who registered because we have your email addresses. Um, we're going to send you the link for the replay of this entire webinar so you can share it with your friends. We hope that you do. Um, and we'll also send you a copy of Getting Centard, uh, the rough draft of Coaching Integrity Ideas and Guidelines by Emily, um, and Katrina Valencourt's uh, Love Coach Academy Foundations. So we will send that out to all of you. And um, uh, we're going to share a couple of other thoughts. Oh, also, I noticed that Steve asked about the seven adjustments. And um, we'll also send out a copy of the seven adjustments, mm -hmm. which is a, a primary doctoral teaching. Thesis. Yes, it's Scott's doctoral thesis, how to go from kind of the, the blame, shame, criticism, old paradigm toxicity that creates all the funkiness in relationship, and how to make adjustments so that we're being curious, seeking to understand, being compassionate being an acceptance as opposed to the, the other ways that kind of throw us off. That's a whole other teaching. Um, 
we want to really ask you to please uh, start asking us some questions. Um, I'm noticing, by the way, Olivier Ann West. Oh, wow. Uh, Ann West is with us. And she's um, also a very important part of the Love Coach Academy. Mm -hmm. And someone who's going to be doing a lot of the webinars with us. Mm -hmm. And she's asking that she has lost her sound. So I don't know if um, yeah. we have uh, I, I guess we're broadcasting. So, you know, it might be the, the Google Hangout um, uh, service, you know, bandwidth. Uh, there's a possibility there's a little setting button up there. And you can, um, I mean, to the left, to the settings, you have adjust bandwidth usage. So if the image is choppy, you can reduce um, your stream. Uh, I'm talking to people, like to participants. Um, so, so it's less choppy. You take your cursor over so that you can see all these mm -hmm. little icons on the left-hand side. Uh, actually, this one is, is just above. Oh, oh okay. The little, yeah. the little star that says settings. Uh, left to uh, to the left to settings. There's adjust bandwidth usage. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's like it looks like a volume icon. Okay. Yeah, correct. All right, so thanks. you, Olivia, you might want to type it in. If Anne can't hear, then she's not going to hear our directions. So you may want to type the directions in so she can. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a long letter. <laughs> very very. I can smart. I can I can do that. Okay. Okay. I can do that. Okay. okay. I can do that. All right. Thanks. So, um, you know, I wanted to riff, and, and we're going to answer your questions. We still so, want to hear from you. Yeah, we're here to on. support you. So we want to, what are the some things that you're really looking to find out to either expand your practice, hone your skills, refine your skills? What trouble are you maybe having with a specific client or issue? And, and yeah. I mean, I'm looking at, we've got 25 people on the webinar. Adrian in New Zealand, brilliant love coach, who is a new friend. Tressa in San Diego. Teresa Vargo, who's right next door. Art in San Diego. Adrian up in Oregon. Deborah Haviland, who's in Marin. Our beloved friend Megan in Hawaii. Larry in San Diego. Steve, which Steve is that? I'm not sure. Hello, Steve, whichever Steve you might be. Um, Jerry so Scott, in New Zealand. Hey, Scott. Yeah. I'm, I'm making up a story that maybe if they've got questions they want to have confidential, that they can be anonymous, that they can just put like an A in front of it, and that means we don't introduce who's asking the question, but what are the questions that they might feel shy or embarrassed or, or are stopping them in their coaching that they really want some help on, but they want to kind of not have it announced who they are and where they're from. Nice. As Tia, your colleague in Colorado, would just said in the chat room, you You're are so, so smart, smart, Paul. <laughs> so Triambica says, how to support individual clients who have a lot of negative self-talk? That's a great question. Yeah. Specific phrases to use. <sighs> so when I'm working with a client, and I'd love to hear what you or Paul have to say about this also. When I'm working with a client that has a lot of negative self-talk, um, I try to help them identify where did that come from. Um, is Did it come from what their father said to them, what their mother said to them, what a lover said to them? How far back does that voice come from? Mm -hmm. um, and this is where sometimes we'll go into the sub-personality work, which has really become mm -hmm. such a big part of what Emily and I love to do together. Um, because we don't want to just make, we don't want to jackal the jackal. We don't want to judge the part of that person that has negative self-talk. What we want to do is understand where did that self-talk come from? Are they just embodying the voice of someone who is critical towards them? Or is it a sub-personality within themselves that has cultivated a belief system that maybe in time they thought that belief system was somehow protecting them, guarding them, even supporting them, but it's become um, old or outdated and always done with love. No make wrong. You're not even wrong for having the self-talk, but you know, how does the self-talk feel in your body? When does that come up? Is it a default reaction? And what can we do? What can we create within that part of you that's a more loving choice uh, or a more present time choice? Yeah. Well, I I, I love the subpersonality work that we do. It's like finding that part of ourself 
where where it might have gotten developed and giving it a name and seeing it you know kind of as an aspect within ourself that's really wanting something it's wanting um, care you know what are the needs underneath the criticism and how do we kind of bring it back to self-love like how would you talk to that part of yourself how would you give that part of yourself care love compassion understanding um, as that where that's where I go and to basically love that part of ourself um, back into wholeness um, back into um, really a lot of those parts are just really wanting to be heard they're wanting to be expressed they're wanting reassurance um, so that's kind of this the work that we do in the subpersonality work Paul is there anything you'd like to add yeah there, there are several things one is um, finding the beautiful message underneath the communication so that's one part of it two is if you're not consciously planting flowers in your garden, weeds will grow. You know, the mind is busy almost 24-7. And if you're not consciously choosing what you're going to think, all sorts of stuff can come up. And then also, I spent 18 years as a, a commercial fisherman in Alaska, and it's like there's times when you just need to take over the boat. Like the captain says, I've got it. I've, I've got this, and the negative voice, you can just kind of reassuring it. It's like the little kid, honey, I got this. You can sit back down. I'm running the ship right now. And if you don't, like on a daily basis, almost daily, when on my jog, I am consciously choosing what I'm going to think. I have my affirmations and my incantations that I say that, so I'm consciously choosing what I want, and I'm reconditioning my brain because if I, it's like a muscle. If I don't consciously work out, I, I don't stay in shape. And if I don't consciously work out what I'm thinking and how I'm thinking it, I start to, you know, go to I lose my shape. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Paul. Those that. are excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I, I'm really, we're really big on the attitude of gratitude. So, where can we find? Um, authentic appreciation for ourself and really acknowledging ourselves for the ways that we have shown up or the things that we've even done throughout our day um, that we can actually celebrate. We're kind of in celebration or appreciation deficiency mm -hmm. as a society. Mm -hmm. And so that is how can we start to get our clients to start authentically celebrating and being in gratitude rather than focusing on the deficiency. Um, that's kind of the thought. That yeah. Comes to mind. Thank you. I'm I'm really pleased. We've got some questions coming in, so I want to reflect them back before we lose them. Yeah. Uh, Teresa Vargo, our dear friend and a wonderful coach, she asked, "How long do you work with a client? When does it become codependent? What is the time frame?" So that's mm -hmm. a, a question to tackle. Um, and Steve also asked, "Any advice when your inquiry and curiosity takes the client into a painful memory or trigger?" And their language becomes aggressive or even violent towards me, the coach. Mm. So there's a couple That's of really, really good, good questions. Question, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'll tackle Teresa's first, and okay. then we'll get to Steve's. And likewise, Paul, Emily, look forward to your input if you have some. Um, I like to. Of course, it depends on the situation, but I think it's a really good idea to establish with a client. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm not going to see you week after week. Um, I want to support you to learn these tools so you can handle and manage mm -hmm. these situations by yourself. Now, there are some clients, I've done one session with them, and they go, wow, that's great. Um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, about um, a wonderful client that I worked with. I did one session with her, never heard from her again, and a year later she called me and asked me to perform her wedding ceremony for her, because in that one session she got all the tools she needed to save her marriage. Um, <laughs> or save a relationship and, wow. I, and I ended up performing her wedding ceremony. I want to know her. <laughs> like, Kelly, Kelly. Know her. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's people are quick. Um, and then there are other people, of course, that are going through a really painful separation that might end up becoming a, a you know, a, a long-term separation mm -hmm. where there's a, a process. I think working with anybody week after week, more than six months, you got to really start reevaluating mm. How much are they really taking in? How much are they really changing? How much are they really growing? Um, and be careful because there are clients 
that just want to vent every week. And that's okay. If, if you feel comfortable letting somebody vent week after week after week and you listen to them vent and thank you very much. I'll see you next Monday at 3 o'clock, you know, and tell me what your husband – and then when they come in, so what did your husband do last week that pissed you off? And 50 minutes will go by very fast. If you notice yourself starting to feel really drained after your coaching calls, you're probably not setting up good self-care mechanisms and you're, you might just be res being a, a venting bag and I, I don't promote that so yeah so we in general are like we're here to teach tools and guide people through a, a big transformation um, I'll speak for myself I pretty much only take clients that are really going through something difficult that I'm actually kind of challenged by helping them with and so usually it's like okay there's a big problem we're going to use these tools to manage that problem but then you're going to know these tools so you can use them for the future problems that are inevitable in your different relationships. Paul, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I. it's like I, I'm, I'm looking at it slightly different. Um, if you drew like a reverse pyramid, on top there's surface level beliefs, mid-level beliefs, core beliefs. And part of what I think we're about, or I'm about as a coach, is to help people solve problems, and also transform their relationships or themselves. And transformation happens when you get not on the surface belief. And a lot of times when people come and they just want to learn a new tool or technique, um, they're only at the surface level. And tools and techniques are very cool. I, I love to teach them. But it's like the only time that real transformation happens is when they get to mid or core level belief. And, and the way I kind of think about it, one of my other mentors, Byron Katie, talked about this. When you go outside, if you look down and you see a big snake right there. Now, in my family, we'd reach down and pick it up, but most people would be startled and jump back. And if you look down and all of a sudden realize that snake is really a piece of rope, then what happens is it, you, there's an instant transformation. It's almost impossible to go back to seeing that rope as a snake and scaring yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a change that's almost instant and permanent. The other part is like using these tools on a regular basis is a choice that we have to we have to like build the muscle and go to the gym and constantly choose them. Learning these tools is an ongoing process and I take people and I don't even take people I used to take people for one session at this point, it's basically three months. Three months. Mm -hmm. That's usually mine. Yeah. 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 My usually three months once a week for me. Yeah, and I have, it's like, it's a commitment for transformation, and I don't want people, like, in the middle, if you're remodeling your house, in the middle of remodeling your house, it sucks. Yeah. And I don't want people in the middle of remodeling their beliefs and their relationship and all that just go, this is too much, I quit. The people who commit to the three months are really committing to themselves. It's not to me. It's not to anything else. It's like, you know what? I'm worth it. I, my relationship's worth it. I'm going to put my ass on the line, mm -hmm. and I'm going to show up. Yeah. And so I want people that are ready to show up that really want to have a breakthrough because in the past, I've wanted it for them more than they've wanted it for themselves. And so now, I, you know, somebody wants to just come in for one or two sessions, most of the time I say thank you and there's a lot of other coaches and no. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I s I, oh, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> you know what? I want to get to um, – Steve, we're going to get to your question. Yeah. But I want to get to David's because since we're talking about how to handle three months, six months, one month, yeah. I think David's question about the money would be a good one for us to go into. Okay. And then did, we'll come down David to Steve. Say? Okay, we'll go down to Steve, yeah. So David asks, how do you handle the money situation? Do you charge differently for individuals or couple sessions? How much time do you allow? Give examples of dialogue for expressing flexibility about cost. That's a big question. A big question. So let's try and be, let's you know, laser it. Laser it. Um, almost all my sessions now are by Skype because I travel a lot and I have clients all over the world. Um, I do not charge more whether it's an individual or a couple. Doesn't really matter because it's the same amount of time on my end. Um, I do have a sliding scale. Um, which consistently goes up. My sliding scale currently starts at $90 an hour with the average being $150 an hour. Um, 
I'm more and more becoming uh, pretty firm about giving people homework assignments, and I want them to text me and let me know if they did their homework assignment or how it went. Um, and I don't charge for texts, and I don't charge for quick questions by text. If somebody hits a bump or has a nuance and they want some support, and they text me and I text them back, I don't charge for that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with the sliding scale, I just let people know that I'm at a point where I have more clients than I can manage, um, and so that's you know this is kind of my bottom level. I will say that when I was first starting and I was looking for clients, I started my sliding scale was at 50 bucks an hour, which was very, very low. And even for where I am, $90 an hour is very low for my kind of current status. Um, but sometimes somebody comes into the $90 an hour level that's really fascinating to me that uh, I feel like, okay, I want to I learn from this one. Because honestly, at this point, I learn, I always am learning from my clients. Every situation I learn what works, what didn't work, how can I manage this? Because I'm wanting to learn as much as I can and then apply it in the big picture through Love Coach Academy. Uh, um, Emily, then Paul. I know for, we do a couple sessions together, so we, obviously we charge more. Our base is 150 an hour, but it goes up to like 350 an hour. But that's because there's two of that's us. That's because there's two of us, right. yeah. So, um, but besides, yeah, being if it's just individual or couples on your own, probably the same amount. It's like, what's your, what's, what is your time? Like, what is your value for what you offer in the time, um, time slot? Like, what is, what feels good? I usually, I have also a three month commitment when people work with me, um, because I'm really like Paul. I'm, I'm really valuing the transformation over time. Um, but my usually my base, even after I sell a package, usually ends up being on like 125 an hour when I break it down. That's kind of where I'm at. Paul? Yeah, I the first thing I do is I I spend in 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour with them for free to free. find out whether I'm going to enjoy working with them or not, and and do I have something to offer, and do they want to work with me? So before I say just sign up and just pay, we spend that time together. So that's my gift. And if they decide to, they can either it's four ninety seven a month or twelve hundred and ninety seven dollars if they pay for the three months in advance. And it's once a week. And for a while, before I did my working with my current company that's taking up an awful lot of my time. I would do three sessions with them privately and then have one session a month that all of my clients could come to because then they would learn from each other. They would share their wins and their victories and it was a great um, learning environment and one of the sessions a month, I didn't have to do it for each individual. I had the whole group there. So it was mm -hmm. three individual sessions and one group session a month. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Um, we're going to answer Steve's question now, but I want to acknowledge that Tresa and Art have asked some really good questions, so we're going to get to yours after we answer Steve's. Yeah. So Steve's question is, again, any advice when our inquiring curiosity takes the client into a painful memory trigger and their language becomes aggressive or even violent toward the coach? Really good question. Good question. You know, honestly, I've been coaching for about 14 years, and that's only happened three or four times in my entire life. Um, it, it hasn't happened that often. Um, of course, we always have to set a clear boundary. And I would say that uh, pay attention because, I mean, sometimes people will go zero to 60 very quickly. So that's where we call a timeout and slow it down. Mm -hmm. If someone's angry, as long as they're not being violent towards me, anger intrigues me because anger means that they have unmet needs that are coming to the surface. So I drop into empathy. Yeah. Wow. You must be you're really pissed. There's some what is it you're needing? Yeah. What is it that you wanted that you didn't get? What is it that happened that stung? Yeah. And I try and get them out of the story and out of the make wrong of the other person and into the need itself. Mm -hmm. So instead of um, since I'm looking at Paul, instead of it being that Paul guy, he just doesn't respect me. I don't go into, oh, so it's about Paul not respecting you, but it's like, so you really value respect. So respect is so important to you. Respect. So I'm not now talking about the story of when he didn't get it. 
I'm bringing it into the value that he cares about, which begins to shift it. See, that's a beautiful thing about empathy. We don't give empathy out of pity, which is, oh, you poor thing. Yes, Paul really was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. It's like you value respect and you want more respect and you long for respect and respect is really important to you. Now we're getting away from the deficiency story and into the heart of the matter. Mm, that's good. Also, to remember that when someone has anger, usually if you can just remember underneath is that little baby jackal yeah. that's really scared and has probably some grief going on. So anger is usually just the, the top emotion and we want to really sink down and to be able to see wow, what, what might be going on underneath? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a beautiful teaching that I heard recently from a sp spiritual teacher named Matt Kahn. He says, when anger is coming up, really what it is is repressed passion. That's cool. And so it's anger like, is, is repressed, repressed passion. passion. So a lot of times we get angry because our needs and values, either we haven't spoken up for them or we, we've, we've abandoned them or they're just not being met in the way that we want. And so we want, we're want we like getting angry because we're like, no, I will not do that again. I will not let him, to, I will not be talked to like that again. And that's not going to work for me. So mm -hmm. we just want to remember where can we create the anger so that it's being expressed in the highest good for all. Um, so it's not being projected outward onto blame, shame, or make wrong, but really empowering you to get in touch with your own needs and values that you might have maybe abandoned. When somebody gets really triggered, it's going to take usually 20 to 30 minutes for the neocortex to relax and for them to go back into accessing the frontal lobes. So that's one thing to remember. If somebody is triggered to the point where they're like seeing red, you need to call a big time out, literally have them go for a walk, or, or just give them empathy and help them to calm down. Um, and again, remember, it takes 20 to 30 minutes for the neocortex to open up again and for us to access our empathy center. Um, David asked a quick question, which I want to get to, and then let's get to Tressa and Arts. Right. How many sessions in a three-month package? I, I see clients. Yeah, I, I, go, oh, go ahead. I just want to interject one thing on that last question because this is really important. Part of it is how you frame it in advance so that you're prepared for this. And one of the things is setting up, and I do something about the comfort zone, and that for us to really do deep work, it's going to be outside the comfort zone. Mm. And the second thing, because I've been working in prison for the last eight years, so I work from minimum to maximum security, and men's side, women's side, and so what I get is I get a lot of permission up front. Yeah. And one of the things I ask for, I say, can I coach you? And sometimes a coach will tell you what you don't want to hear, show yeah. you what you don't want to see, have you do exercises you don't want to do because they're outside your comfort zone so you can get the results that you want. And I ask, do I have permission to coach you? And they, they say yes. And I say, before you say that, I want one other thing. I have a strong need for my personal safety. So in my coaching, if you ever want to get up and like hit me, just raise your hand and I'll stop doing whatever I'm doing. Now in teaching for over eight years, I go in once or so a month and I've only had somebody raise their hand one or two times and instantly everybody starts laughing, including them. But you know, we've set up a great container in advance for it and it's safe for them to be angry. It's really okay and it's, it's getting outside their comfort zone. And I think my purpose as a coach is to help people get outside their comfort zone because that's where the breakthroughs are going to come. Beautiful. Awesome, awesome, Paul. And I really love, Paul, the, the, the idea that you're really asking them permission. You know, and, and I've heard you say that, actually, when in coaching someone, you do do that a lot. Permission to me, for me to come mm -hmm. in coach here. Permission for me to... And I've heard you regularly do that, which is so awesome because it's, again, giving them the empowered choice to be like, okay. Yeah. Beautiful, Paul. Thank you. Thanks for jumping in on that. Um, Adrian is going to actually, in a little while, Adrian's got a question specifically for Paul. Uh, Paul, you might want to take a look at it and think about how to answer it. Trace, uh, um, but let's David, sessions in the three-month package. I see such, I see people once a week. Yeah, likewise. I like to see people once a week, unless they're really if, in crisis. If they're in crisis, then, then it might be twice two or three a times. Week yeah, yeah. For a short period of time. Yeah. 
Um, and Paul, do you pretty much do once a week with your people? Yep, pretty much once a week. I waited until you just had gotten that the, the bottle in your mouth to ask you that question. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> okay. Um, and I can't see the question, so I don't know what Adrian's question is. You know, you can see. Do you know how to open up the chat box? I'm because looking at the group chat, and for some reason, I'm. If you click the chat box. Yeah, and I see Katrina left, and I see some other things, but I don't know what I'm not doing right well, here. Actually, you're on the usual chat. You see, you sh you should see on the left a webinar Jam Studio white button. You want to click on that button to have the chat room on your right column. Oh, okay. Webinar Jam Studio. Um, so while he's figuring that out, let's um, Tracer. answer Tracer. A Tracer, who we love down in San Diego, who travels all over, she asks, what do you find was the best way of funneling and building your coaching or business? Best funnel or best the... funnel for building your coaching business. How would you suggest new or uh, restarting coaches to increase their client base? I have a lot to say about that. I'll be quick. Um, a wonderful way to do it is make a relationship or form relationships with your local New Thought Progressive churches. Wherever you live, Unity Church, uh, Center for Spiritual Living, Unitarian Churches, Science of Mind, Church of Religious Science, every big city has these churches. And they love compassionate communication. Um, and so what you could do is ask if you can start like a weekly compassionate communication or nonviolent communication class at the church. And if they like you and you started, you can usually announce it to the, the congregation. New Thought Churches are all about learning how to use these kinds of tools to have better relationships mm -hmm. uh, and to keep the family together, to keep the family harmonious. And that's how I built my practice. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, taught on a regular basis at the Sunrise Center and I started a weekly class at Harbin Hot Springs, which I still do. I share it now with Emily and with Dr. Ann West. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've gotten so many clients out of that weekly class. And Harbin, we only have seven people, 12 people, 10 people, but they get a two-hour dose, and so many clients come out of that. So it's a really, that is how I built my practice. And I've noticed it's really working for Anne, um, who was on the call at least for a while. Um, uh, so that's, that's one way that I would suggest. Um, Paul or Emily? Yeah, I, I love the idea of creating practice groups, so like offering tools in a practice-oriented way. And so then what happens is that people start to get transformation, and then they go out and they tell their friends, and then people start coming back on a regular basis and just getting yourself out there. A lot of times what happens is we just, we're not getting ourselves out there and we're not sharing. And so then we're like feeling in paralysis of like what to do. So as much as possible, start to maybe form a group. And people that like you, you know, when I was first starting my practice, I traveled and I did a lot of homes, a lot of people that really liked my work and said, God, Scott, I'd love to introduce you to my friends. And I said, well, I'll come on out. If you can get 10 people there, you know, or 15 people there, if you are whatever number is worth your while. Um, and I traveled. I mean, I traveled to Florida. I traveled to Kentucky and just really allowed people. And I was very... Um, a promotion oriented. I made it easier for people to promote me. I would write up the copy. I'd send them to, you know, this is what you can send out to your friends. This is the email you can use. I mean, we're doing that just with New Zealand and Australia. I, I went to Australia and did a speech and people liked me a lot and went to New Zealand and visited our friend Jaguar who's with us. And then she invited some of her friends and her friends really liked me and I started coaching them and it builds. It just builds that way. Um, so, And you can also do it this way. Online is an amazing platform. You could even start offering weekly free, you could do free or low amount webinars, post up a Facebook page promoting the webinar or an online event and start building it through there. And mm -hmm. a lot of you, especially those of you that are serious that you know we're working with, look at what we're doing. We want to introduce Paul Sterling to people. Maybe some of you are going to hire Paul to be your coach after seeing him today. And this is just getting started. Soon we're going to be doing webinars for hundreds of people at a time. And those of you that are part of the Love Coach Academy, you're going to be on those webinars. We want to introduce you to the world. Right. 
and and yes. the people that are also on here that you know they've been coming to our retreats and our work and developing these tools we want you to come on board and be coaches because we're just going to be overwhelmed with people and people are going to need help and we're going to need to refer them to to, to our you. top to you to you yeah. Paul anything you want to add about building uh, a practice yeah one of the things if you don't have somebody like Olivier who is a tech wizard there in the whole webinar world if you want something really simple you can start with a teleseminar it's almost as simple as a phone call and you talk to a group of people and you have specific benefits of being on that call so that people walk away with value mm -hmm. yeah thank you that's a great idea um, let's get to the next question um, Art had a question a while back he said I find that practice is so important do you have any recommendations for couples regarding practicing the tools before they are needed <laughs> We so love we, we we love people that come in and want to get the tools before they're in breakdown. You know, yeah. it's like yes. Um, wow. You know, I'll just start by being honest about my relationship with Emily. Um, we we ask each other about withholds, mm -hmm. um, and something from the really beginning of our relationship is that, and I want to give you credit for starting this, Emily when there was an agitation or a concern or something that felt funky you know we'll bring it up you know it's like hey you know that I'm feeling a little funky or hey was there was there a rock in that snowball you just tossed at me or when I heard that I took it personally you know I, I heard it as a make wrong is that how you meant it mm -hmm. you know we'll check in with each other um, and it's and creating safety is the key mm -hmm. like you know I, I really love you and I can tell I just feel like there might be something going on and I want to just ask you you know it, the other night was there something that you weren't saying to me I mm -hmm. I just I don't know if it was my stuff but you know was there something there and, and then it's, if we're role-playing right now we're in a role-play role um, yeah you know and I, I didn't know whether to bring it up because I don't know if I was just being sensitive and I want to I don't want to be too feminine around you and I'm mm. wanting to be strong and masculine these days because I know you like that. And um, so I was I was confused about whether I wanted to bring it up or not and yeah. I had to kind of process that on my own a little bit first. Mm. And then maybe we'll go forward. But notice in the role play, you know, she made it safe for me to kind of remember what was going on and I kind of then went in and began to share with her what was going on for me in a vulnerable way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just something we do in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Another thing also is lots of appreciations. Just and reassurance. reassurance and appreciation is the compost that grows a really healthy garden in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Lots of appreciation and um, again, I mm. you know Emily's learned I like lots of appreciation, and she's gotten really good at giving. Yeah, it to and me. I used to have some judgments around it, you know, but a lot of it was because I wasn't really in touch with giving myself that appreciation. Mm -hmm. So then I projected out onto Scott as like, oh God, he's so appreciation deficient. And, um, so I just like, really like it. Yeah, and then I I started to realize, wow, when I appreciate him, it's like it's giving me more connection and more love, and of course I love that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yep. There's actually an, an exercise that I've given people and I've used myself in relationships, which is at night, just before going to bed, what are three things you'd like to be acknowledged or appreciated for? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Being as specific as possible mm -hmm. in that. And it really, we do live in a world where there's not a lot of acknowledgement and appreciation. We're running on a deficit. And so, it's very empowering and sweet in being able to ask for it. I'd like to be acknowledged for this. Yeah, and it was funny. Even the other day, um, Scott came up, and I'd just eaten, like, some peanut butter. <laughs> and he looked at me, and he's like, before you go, I really need reassurance, appreciation, and a kiss. <laughs> and I'm like, and Scott's really learning. I've told him, I love it when you tell me what you want, no matter what it is. I love it when you tell me what you want, because then I know where you are. I want to hear that. And so here I am with this peanut butter, like, <laughs> you know. Giving me appreciation with this stuff in the mouth. But it was great. We just started cracking up and laughing. Yeah. It was really fun. So also the value of keeping 
things light, bringing play into, um, you know, Art said, how can I practice, is not looking at these tools of, of just kind of bringing weight to them, like we have to practice, but make it fun. You know, I just really want to bring juice back into our relationship or playfulness. Playfulness. We're really working on that laughing more. We were talking about that the last couple of days. Let's laugh more. We've been, we've had some situations where we're, we've been laughing. Like, and, uh, yeah, laughing more really helps. Yeah. So we're at 6.30. We have one question we haven't answered. Um, and it's actually a question for Paul, so I'll yeah. read it to you in a moment, Paul. And then I think we're going to wind this up. Um, but... Uh, before we do this, I want to, uh, oh, and Tressa is saying there's a lot of feedback when Paul talks. So Tressa, you may want to turn down the volume on your own speaker so it doesn't re-enter your own mic while you're speaking, especially because you're going to be speaking in a moment. Um, and I uh, want to say that, uh, please, if you haven't joined our affiliate program yet, please do so right away mm -hmm. uh, because we're going to send out an email letting you know how to work it. It's a win-win. All you can do is make money. Uh, also, if you bring in two people to our membership program, you get a lifetime membership to us. And uh, we're, all of you on this call are people I want to work with for years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, let's co-create something really wonderful together. Mm -hmm. So um, please, please do that. Well, speaking of appreciation, Teresa has sent out, Paul, you look amazing, and I'm sending you a hug. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Um, Jill is saying that she just lost sound. Is there any suggestions? Mm. So, Olivia, maybe you can write in the box any suggestions. I notice the sun is about to hit us. Yeah. So, Paul, I'm going to read you the question. This is from Adrian, who's a, a wonderful... Uh, a friend of ours and someone who's a love coach up in Oregon. Adrian asks, I'm interested to hear Paul talk more about his process around working with the layers of his client's core beliefs. Is there a baseline philosophy that you are coming from? Anything more that you want to share here? I'm just going to fix the yeah. light. Wow, that, um, I'm trying to some new gear from uh, communication and seeing if there's an echo. Emily, am I okay now? You, you sound good on our end. Okay. It may uh, be possible that the echo is actually um, coming from Scott's computer. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, okay. Should we turn our microphone off? Should we mute, when Should we mute Paul's... while Paul's talking? It seems to be fine right now. Okay. All right. So first, first thing, thing I do is identify, identify that there are the surface, mid, and core beliefs. So I consider surface belief, if I convince you to go from drinking Starbucks to drinking Joe's coffee, you know, it. there may be a long conversation, but there's no real change. Your life isn't transformed. A mid-level belief is maybe you go from being a, a Catholic to being a Presbyterian or some, you know, something in the area of religion. Um, a core belief is like one where you go, men are, women are. And so I ask questions that kind of reveal what are somebody's core beliefs. And it, there's a triangle I put up, and it's like down over here, that's your results. To get a result, what do you have to take? It's actions. So what controls the results you get in your life is the actions you take or don't take. What controls your belief, I mean, what controls your actions is at the top of this pyramid, which is your beliefs. And so your beliefs control your actions, your actions control your results. The problem is what controls a lot of people's beliefs is their past results. So if you've grown up in relationships that are a bit abusive, you might say men are, women are, relationships are. Anything that like are, is, stuff like that, conversations like that, is revealing somebody's beliefs. Now, when working with them, they can either operate out of their past results or their past, or they can operate out of possibilities, which is the future. So what I want to do early on in working with someone is figure out what possibilities they want to create, then what beliefs they need to have to make that possibility a reality, and then what actions, and then the results. And a lot of times, people operate as if a belief is a real thing. I would rather die than change my beliefs. It's like, no. A lot of your beliefs were created by a, a very angry five-year-old or three-year-old, and you really want to explore, is that belief serving me, or is it getting in my way? 
And so to identify, to make the invisible visible, and then have them choose, is this belief serving me, or is it getting in my way, and have that conversation. Thank you, Thank Paul. Thank you, Paul. That was great. Yeah. Well, we're we'll yeah, 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 we're going to wrap up. Um, I want to thank, we've got 25 people that are still with us, a lot of our dearest friends from all over the world. Every single one of you, as I look and see, Lakshmi Devi Lester joined us from Chicago. Um, Heather um, Talbot up in uh, Portland. Uh, so it's really cool, people from all over the world and all, all over the United States joining us. And this is just the start. We're going to be growing this thing in a big way. And uh, we're honored to be participating with all of you. I want to say thank you to Paul Sterling coming in from Colorado. And Paul's going to be on a, a webinar that we're going to do on um, Thursday, May 10th. Um, I want to thank you, beloved Emily. Thank oh, you so I want much. to thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're yeah. an amazing coach and beloved. And How blessed we are. We are blessed. And we are especially appreciating Olivier. Oh Olivier God. makes it all happen. You know, we would not be here without Olivier. We would not be. No, Olivier. Thank you, thank Olivier. you so much. And let's all please join our affiliate program if you haven't already, and do it right now. Yeah. You know, don't go eat. Just it takes two minutes to join it. Um, Olivier, anything you want to share with people? Because there were some questions about ClickBank, um, and so this might be just any of our affiliates might have questions about ClickBank or the affiliate program. Yeah, so if you have any specific questions, uh, please post it in the... Um, can you just mute your, your microphone, please, uh, Scott, because of the echo? Thanks. Um, post it in the chat, and I try to, um, to uh, answer quickly. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Steve. Um, so basically, the way it works is that in order to track your sales, you need to have a ClickBank account. So it's something that you set once and for all, and um, so that the affiliate commissions are tracked and um, uh, automatically, and your money, uh, you, you, you get uh, your share and your um, commission, your referral, uh, automatically. So uh, it's easier for everyone, it's easier for us, and um, it's, you, you get directly the money, so there's no like going back and forth, it's all automatic, so it's, it's very efficient. Um, but it just requires this first step of creating the ClickBank account. It may sound like um, a roadblock right now, a little hassle, uh, but believe me, once that, that's done, everything down the line um, is going to be so much easier. Uh, so first, you need to have a ClickBank account in order for us to track your referrals. And then once you have that uh, ClickBank account, so let me just... I'll give you again the link for that. I'm going to post it in, in the chat room. Uh, so this is the link to create your account if you don't have one yet. If you have a ClickBank account from years ago, you can use that one. What counts is your username. You need to know and make a note of your username, uh, ClickBank username. When you sign up for ClickBank, you need to pick up a username. And then, once you know your username, um, your affiliate link is uh, username.lcalive.hop.clickbank.net. So that link you need to place in all your communications. So um, uh, starting tomorrow, we're going to send start sending out um, promo emails saying, hey, uh, sign up for, uh, regist please register for our upcoming webinar on Sunday. So we send out an email about that, and you send out an email about that as well. We send out with our link, and you need to send out with your affiliate link so that we can track who's coming from you. Um, so that's the link that you need to, to use. We provide templates. Yesterday, um, we, we sent out a template email that you can use, change uh, in any way you would like. You can make it, actually it would be even better if you know you personalize your own email message. Um, but we provide that template of, um, for you to, to write that faster, or to give you an idea. And uh, uh, the more um, warm and uh, personal you can make it, uh, to the people that you're talking to, the better. 
so please do not talk about any product coming up. Do not talk about any sales coming up. Do not try to sell um, anything, any product from us. Um, that's down the line. First, we want to give, give a lot of value. Um, so just talking about the, the next, the upcoming webinar is the only thing to talk about and trying to make like fun, exciting, and that you share your your experience. Like I'm, I will, I want to to um, um, be on those call to calls to listen to those calls because I think the value is amazing. So just join me on those calls, right? So that's the easiest uh, way to do it. So um, we have a first email saying, "Hey, join on the calls on Sunday." And then on Monday, there will be a replay. So um, we will send out the link for the replay. And you can use your affiliate link as well to say, hey, here's the replay. We'll point to the, to the replay. Um, and then we'll say the second call, um, it's a three-part series, right? So it's three uh, webinars for free. So the second webinar, so we on, on Monday or Tuesday, we're going to start saying, hey, the next call is on Thursday. So same, you know, yesterday great webinar, I learned this and or that, you know, or that piece was re really um, uh, interesting. Uh, please watch the replay and join us on Thursday for the second call. And same on the next day, you will have a replay and the third call on, su on, the, on Sunday 10th. Um, so that's really the first phase. And um, um, uh, that's that simple. Once you, ha you have a affiliate thing, you just uh, invite people to, to be on the calls. And that's all there is to it, so it should be uh, simple enough. Um, Olivier? Yes. Can I say one quick thing? Please. If, if the technology went a little fast for people, Olivier has, a, there's a web page that Scott and Olivier have put together that goes through these details really slow. So if this overwhelmed you, don't worry about it. There's a page you can go to. It goes really slow. There's a couple of videos. You can take your time. Um, it, it's a lot of information to absorb at once if you're not used to this. So you can go right there in Olivia. I think it might be good if you put that link where you the affiliate sign up link there, and people you can you can take your time and it's really easy, and they do take you step by step. So Olivia gave you a lot of information at once. If that was overwhelming, just go to the web page and you know go slowly. And if it wasn't overwhelming, you've done this before and cool. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, you're so right on. That's so awesome, Paul. You're exactly right. And so yeah. just go to that link and that link's got the page and all the information. Yeah, and I, I will send you one step at a time via email. Um, you know, one last thing that's probably the most important thing of all is that tomorrow is Emily's birthday. <laughs> so uh, everybody, send her, you know, some happy birthday love. Oh, thank you. And very much. oh my God, uh, oh. I, you know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say something for a moment. Love Coach Academy started three years ago, but it wasn't until Olivier and Emily showed up in my life that I really felt like, okay, now, now, now we're ready. Mm -hmm. It's like there was some part of me that knew. You know, you know. Let's do some retreats. Let's just see what we've got going here. But I wanted it to be. I, we weren't ready. And then when Olivier showed up, and then when Emily mm. showed up, it was like, okay, now we can fly. You know. And I just am mm. so grateful you. to Thank you, you <laughs> both my my two closest partners, and then for amazing partners like Paul Sterling and mm. Ann West and Katrina. And yeah. all of you that I'm seeing, yeah. from Jaguar in New Zealand to Melody in San Diego, God bless you all. So I just wanted to let everyone know on the call <laughs> that we will absolutely get those documents out to the people on the call. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining Olivia can help us with those emails and, and send out those documents. Um, and also just if this is amazing content and it's just going to get even even more and more better and it's going to be so juicy and amazing what we're going to be giving on our webinars so we really hope that you join us and if you're um, I mean this is if you come into our web portal too this is going to be like regular medicine for you every week uh, because we're not going to be doing free webinars this is, this is you, you we're, know, 
Right, we're starting. So we're giving free webinars. It's only $375 for a lifetime membership. Yeah. Six months from now, a year from now, it'll be a thousand dollars for a lifetime membership, and it's not going. Nothing's going to be free. And you guys are our community. I mean, you're you're They're the family. your family, and we want you to. We want to see you successful. We want to see us successful, and we want to. We want to end up flying you out when we're famous, so we can party together and have fun. Um, so that's my intention. So. You know, I've, I've <laughs> being the old guy around here. Um, I've been involved in things that have grown and become very, very big and very successful. And you know what? You always remember the beginning. You know, it's like when you're when you're rich and you're famous and it's huge and you're dealing with all the complexity of that. Yeah. You always remember the very first couple of webinars, the first people that we got started with, the people that were in on the ground floor. That's like what you always remember. It's like this is the magic time. This is the fun time. So thank you for being those initial friends of ours that are right here with us at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Thank All right. you. Uh, beautiful messages yeah, from everybody. Thank you. Tia thank you, everybody. in Colorado. Thank you. And our friends in San Diego. Heather up in Portland. Beautiful. Uh, thank you, Paul Sterling. And uh, thank you, Olivier. See you all soon. All right. See you guys. Join us next Sunday. The next free webinar is this Sunday, May 3rd at 6 o'clock. And, so and feel, free to, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about the affiliation. And um, if you're struggling for anything, I'd be happy to, to help you. Thank, Thank you, you, Olivier. Olivier. Paul, did you want to? Yeah, I'm going to be talking. And you might want to mute just for a second. Okay. Um, part of what I'm going to talk about next week is that most relationships don't end because of a lack of love. They end because you run into to roadblocks that are bigger than your current skill sets. And so with the tools that Scott's teaching and Emily and Anne and Katrina and me, it's like, it helps you have those breakthroughs at the time you need them the most. And, it, and it, it really is important to practice them before you need them rather than practice them in the middle of the major upset. So I'm going to give you some very amazing basic but important skills that you can use with your clients and that your clients can use starting on that evening. So I'm looking forward to this. Thank you for all the work. Thank you, Thank Paul. you, Paul. Looking forward to a lot of collaboration with you. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye. See you very soon.